Welcome back. We're joined now on the panel by Niamh Ivrian from the Life Institute and Fine Gael Senator Catherine Noon. We want to discuss the abortion regime that we can expect on January. The final stages of the legislation are going through the Shannad this week. Uh, Catherine Noon, many outstanding issues, the money to be paid to GP, the medical council protocol, uh, freedom of conscience. Is it realistic to set up this on the 1st of January across the country? Is it being rushed? I don't think so, Ivan. Um, I mean, this debate has been had for some time now and, you know, I don't wish to rehash the type of argument that was made during the referendum, but each day, you know, up to 10 women travel to the UK to access these services in the UK. And January couldn't come soon enough for, for the women of Ireland. And the reality is that I think that, that the clinicians will show leadership and there will be a service in January. It's not going to be perfect from day one, but it will be rolled out and it will be an evolving service. And I'm confident that the service will be delivered delivered effectively. Louise O'Reilly, are you happy with the way the government is going about this? Well, I think that valuable time was lost between the referendum and, you know, while the legislation was being debated, I think more could have been done to ensure that the services were ready to go. That said, I take the Minister for Health at his word. He has said that the services will be ready. And Taoiseach has said they may have to be phased in. But I think, and, and Catherine is right to say this, you know, for every day that the service is delayed, 10 women will travel. For every day that the service is delayed, women uh, will be forced to access um, tablets online where they may not have medical supervision to take safe tablets but the medical supervision is also important so I think the there has to be and we've, we've just been discussing Brexit and whether or not you need to put a, a deadline and, and, and Declan made the point you've put the deadline in place and you work towards the deadline I think that that is important I think you know we should have a deadline we should have a date that we are they are that we are moving towards but this is a new service and I don't think any of okay. us are naive enough to believe that it will be up running and, and, and ready to go and fully bedded in on the 1st of January January. That said, and I, and I wouldn't be heaping praise all over the government on this because I do think that vital time okay. was lost. Ne Neve Vreen, you have serious concerns. Well, clearly, Simon Harris has completely misjudged this. Clearly, he has not engaged properly with doctors because the doctors are now all saying, not just the GPs, not just the nurses and the midwives, but we now have the Institute of Obstetrics and Gynaecologies being lobbied by their members to call for an emergency general meeting. Why? Because they're saying this is unsafe to roll out in January. I think it's extraordinary that after months and months of hearing this was all about women's safety, that we have two, a TD and a senator sitting with us here tonight insisting that it's going to be rolled out in January when the medical experts are telling us it's unsafe to do so. But you're uh, opposed to the regime anyway. You, you, that, that's not the point. The point is that the doctors are telling us this is unsafe and Simon Harris is ignoring them. He has to be the worst minister, ignoring. sorry, he has to be the worst minister for health this country has ever had and he's getting a free pass from the media and from the opposition simply because he spends his whole time tweeting about how much he's delighted he's going to be to roll out abortion services come what may on the 1st of January. Even though he's been told that it's unsafe to do so. Catherine Noon. Uh, there was a meeting this morning with 50-odd um, uh, me medical professionals with the minister and officials, and there were only one or two people at the end of that Are meeting. Are you denying the were... Institute of Obstetricians has called for Sorry, an emergency I general meeting? You, if you, just you let actually me tried my to. Point. Have you, uh, are you denying that, Catherine? Has I, the Institute called an emergency general meeting to talk about this issue? I am making the issue? point about a, a meeting that happened this morning. These are the interviewers here. No, but sorry, the Medical Council haven't put in place the protocol yet, have they? No, the, the guidelines are currently being drafted and they will be in place. There's no question about that. They were discussed at the meeting today. Of the 50-odd people present today, there were two voices who were suggesting that it, they think that they still won't be available in January, the, the services. But all other medical practitioners who were there this morning at I, this meeting were very satisfied mm -hmm. that there are are challenges, but that they can meet those no, challenges. Chris and Patrick, who is the former master of the Coombe, and the, was the, one of the, and the only dissenting voices. And the obstetricians who are lobbying, and they come from right around the country, who are lobbying their own institute on this, are, are saying they're saying these words: "It is unsafe. It is but, unsafe but, but, for women to push through to push through reality. this service in January." Now, isn't it the reality, though, that just like we had a minority who voted no in the referendum, mm -hmm. we have a minority of medical practitioners who don't want to actually, get involved in the provision oh of the no, service? Actually, it's a sort of a logical extension actually, from the vote. No, you're totally wrong there. there are only 150 GPs so far have signed up to this service. 650 GPs want an emergency general meeting and were denied it by the ICGP to fully discuss this issue, including conscientious objection. I saw, and Louise, I was very disturbed to see you at the Health Committee, saying that you wanted to sanction 
doctors who wouldn't facilitate abortions. I think doctors well, and I, doctors... I'll let Louise reply. I just I want to bring Declan in. No, no, I really oh, do no, need no, to no, respond I will to that, Ivan, because that's... Just, that's that, that, oh, OK, reply. Uh, I, that's not what I said. It's on the record. No, no. no oh, yes, it's on the record. It's not on the record. It well, can we hear what Louise says she said, OK? Calm yourself. What I actually said was that those doctors who refused to refer... So it's not about facilitating. Those are words that were put into my mouth and, indeed, on social media, for which I do not thank you. But, anyway, the... The, um, what I did say, and it is on the record, because what we say a committee is on the record, so it's handy that people can check it up. What I did say was that there should be a sanction on those doctors who refused to refer So you want to sanction them? Not that they should be uh, involved. No, they should make a referral, because that's how conscientious objection works. In that's this not case. how conscientious objection works. There's absolutely no need to sense it, please, Declan. Thank you. The, the Bishop Louis, of Belfin, uh, Bishop Kevin Doran, has, has, has told... Catholics who are clinicians, who are on the front line, that they should resist this and refuse to obey mm -hmm. this law, is what he said. Do you agree with them? Well, well, I do. And, and on this point of conscientious objection, you can't define for somebody where, that, that holds a belief that is profoundly uh, important to them that you can't tell them what conscientious objection is for them. Conscientious objection, and as, as they have, have talked about, you, you cannot be involved. If, if you see that these pre-born girls and boys that are going to lose their lives, that are going to be targeted to be killed in abortions, if that's what you believe and that's what you understand is the case, and that's my understanding, then it's unconscionable that you can in any way refer, collaborate, cooper cooperate, facilitate in any way this. That's conscience. Mm -hmm. And if it is not... If that degree of conscientious objection is not allowed, okay. it must be Follow resisted. So they say in a place in Kerry, all the local doctors are conscientious objectors. Yeah. How do you provide a, na a national service? So that's their right. That, the, 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 the folks that, are, that, that have decided that they want to take the lives of pre-born girls and boys are going to have to figure that one out. Mm. But you cannot coerce people into, into violating their consciences. For those where it is that there is also a religious component to that, practising Catholics, etc., there is freedom of religion. It's guaranteed by the Constitution. And what about the law of the land? And what about particularly uh, the, the law, if these, are, if these sure. doctors are in receipt of state income, aren't they required to do what all doctors in the country are required to do? I want to be very clear on this. I don't, I don't want to dodge this issue at all in terms of the law of the land. This is an unjust immoral law. It is no law that at all. That is your opinion, that but is, if it is, if it yes, is it, brought it, it, in by a majority it, in Doyle area, doesn't matter. following a referendum doesn't of the matter. people, it doesn't matter. No, you can't, you can't to people who have conscious, conscientious objection, no, it doesn't no, matter. But nobody's asking them to perform no, any they're abortions asking them to be to, involved, to go to a different doctor. Matt, they give the name of a different that, doctor. That, 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 you're refer, that, referring them to the... That's not true, because this should be an opt-in system. This should be an opt-in system where doctors who want to get involved in taking the life of unborn children can opt in and can provide that service. Conscientious objection goes to the very heart of what, it, of, of what freedom really is. Yep. If you're going to force people, force doctors and nurses to take part in ending the life of an unborn child, you are destroying medical evidence. This, this, uh, this has the potential to be shambolic. Doctors are not uh, providing services to do away with the unborn or anything like it. They are providing they are. a service to women that they have had to travel to the UK for it's in your for, bill. for decades. Okay. Sorry, hold on a second. It's in your there bill. There is no problem. To take the life of the life. I really find it objectionable yeah, that she keeps interrupting me. Sorry, but conscientious objection. I don't have any difficulty with that. I completely respect both of your uh, views on this matter. But you don't. And I completely no, I do actually. You don't. That, Sorry, Declan, OK, can we just let Catherine so speak, please? It's not lip service. The reality is that I do respect that people have a different view to the one which I hold. But the reality is that conscientious, conscientious obstruction will not be accepted. And doctors will have to allow women access to this service. So you don't call they're, it they're, conscientious they're, objection, you call it conscientious obstruction. No, well, and no, what I'm saying is obstruction is different to objection. Providers, and those conscientious providers have contacted me in large numbers and they have said that they are ready, willing and able to well, deliver the then. service. I force others. The, nobody's been forced, you see, they and this is, this is the difficulty because they're... Um, it, there's an attempt being made by some people to rerun the referendum. 
I don't think that there's any point in that because there was a huge amount of discussion that, that took place. The Medical Council have their guidelines on conscientious objection and they simply provide for a referral, not for an involvement, but for a referral on. And I see no reason why they shouldn't continue in place. And I think that does respect those people who don't want to be involved because they won't be involved. They so will I, simply you, make, talk around this they issue will simply you make a referral. Louise, and I'm you not talking can, around I, I, any I, I, issue. I'm making the point that conscientious objection already is provided for and I believe that that is there is adequate provision there that is decided by the you medical council. You see I can council. understand why Sinn Féin are opposed to conscientious objection. Already, they, they, they impose the medical a council on their own party. Have I understand you want to keep talking for the rest of the programme. No, 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 let me Louise. finish my sentence. No, I want to please. make a point. Please. The medical council have those guidelines in place. They are currently You're being operated by doctors. I see no reason that okay. they should okay. change. Yes. I understand why Sinn Féin have a, a serious resistance to conscientious objection because you have lost party members because you impose the whip on them and wouldn't vote let them vote with their own conscience. I think the behaviour of Sinn Féin TDs in particular, and you in particular, Louise, to people like Carol Nolan in the Dáil was absolutely disgusting. You tried to impugn unfair motives to her and to other TDs, to other TDs who wanted to put okay, forward I'm personally to have to give reasonable... Time, but I have let to give let, let me finish my point. Who wanted to put forward person, per, perfectly reasonable amendments, including one which would give pain relief to babies in late-term abortions. And it is shameful that this Senate and this Dáil voted down giving pain very quickly, Louise, I, I don't appreciate being called disgusting by anybody, but that's, was disgusting. that's absolutely fine. It was disgusting. And I absolutely respect the right of someone to hold that opinion. They're wrong. They were proved wrong when we had the yeah, right. Okay, thank you all for joining us.